All right, y'all, so a lot has happened since Trump has gotten to office, and one of those things being the wealthiest people in the world are becoming a lot more wealthy. Now, this is no surprise because if you've heard Kamala's um, policy, a lot of them weren't very good. Like, a lot of them definitely weren't good for business owners and things like that. And then the whole 20% capital gains tax and all of that, that was, that, like, it, it made no sense. A lot of her policies made no sense, and it, it, it kind of was going to kill entrepreneurship. It made no sense for entrepreneurship, but we're going to be, before we actually jump into Elon Musk and some of the other billionaires who actually gained billions from this move, we're going to be diving into Kevin O'Leary's opinion on the whole thing right now. And I love this. Um, what's happened here is the system self-corrected. When you try and break the American model, it fixes itself. And mm. I think people should give credit within the Democratic Party. Donald Trump saved them tonight, too, because they're going to have to take a spatula to these policies and bring it back to the center over the next four years. And in a, in a way, reset. And we talked about this earlier, but he saved entrepreneurship. He saved the entire model of, of the S&P 500 because taxing 20% higher was a really bad idea and it's self-corrected. Capital, and this is why I'm getting on a plane tomorrow night, I, I intentionally didn't leave till tomorrow night so I could go to Geneva, go to Abu Dhabi, go to Riyadh and say it's 21% corporate taxes, 100% not going to change. That is very important for people like me that bring capital back to this country. Yeah. It fixed itself. It fixed itself. And I, I think that's why America works. It has worked for 200 years. When it gets too crazy, it fixes itself. Mm -hmm. And whether you love Trump or you hate him, every Democrat owes him a thank you very much, Mr. President. By the way, as the markets, mm. the poly market and all these... Very strong words from Kevin O'Leary. Very, very strong words from Kevin O'Leary. Let me know how you all feel about that in the comment section down below. I have to agree. I definitely have to agree. You know, I, I've been going hard working on my businesses for a long time. And the the policy she was she was talking about was kind of nuts. It kind of made no sense. And I feel like the the regular people who who just, you know, they, they work for other companies and work for you know, the CEOs and stuff like that. They, they work for these businesses and they don't really have to worry about this stuff. They don't really understand how it works because they don't have to. They just work for someone else. Someone else like just tells them what to do and they just follow it. But it's a lot different when you spend your time building up the things that you're building up and then you invest and then you, you know, you take advantage of all this stuff that comes with you taking extreme risks that, that, are not not guaranteed to pay off. No one starting a business is just guaranteed to be successful. So we take a lot of risk doing that in the first place. And to take that risk and then essentially have to pay more because we made it work. And then if we don't make it work, like what, what benefit do we get if we just don't make it work? What, what if we fail? Like we don't, do we, do we get something for that? No, we, we're taking on a risk that the rest of the world aren't willing to take on. And, and this, this is why, this is why, I feel like everybody should really understand what it means to, you know, to be an entrepreneur. Everybody should, like, it's a course on it should have to be required or something like that. But I don't even believe in the um, school system like that. But <laughs> that being said, let's move on to the, the big topic of this video, which is the billionaires making more money since Trump's gone into office. So as you can see here, the net worths of many of the world's wealthiest people skyrocketed Thursday, particularly those with strong ties to crypto currency. And that's no, that's no surprise. I mean, crypto is the future. And people who took the time to understand why it's the future are going to profit heavily off of, off of cryptocurrency and off of um, understanding this technology before everybody else gets on board. Like, people repeat the cycle of being late to things no matter how much history has to keep happening people still keep making the same mistakes and it's crazy um with stocks soaring following donald trump's election um when as the president elect is expected to embrace cryptocurrency and corporate tax cuts during his upcoming term um elon musk the tesla chief 
who was one of Trump's biggest financial backers in the lead up to the election, experienced a nearly 21 billion jolt to um, his net worth Wednesday, bringing it up to 285 billion as Tesla stock closed up nearly 15% on Wednesday at 288, um, $288.53. It's highest share price recorded this year. Okay, so Tesla made a new high. I'm actually not in the stock market no more. I'm not. I'm not holding many stocks no more. I, I mean, I, I probably still get back in and hold a little something, something. But yeah, um, your boy is all in on crypto. So much opportunity in the crypto space. Love it. Um, Jeff Bezos' net worth net worth is up seven billion to two hundred and twenty three. 0.5 billion after a strong day of trading for Amazon shares up 3.8%, maintaining his position as the world's second wealthiest person behind Musk. Larry Ellison, um, the Oracle co-founder, is nearly 12 billion richer as his net worth jumped to 220.8 billion and lessened the gap between um, him and Bezos for number two on Forbes billionaire list. Warren Buffett, the world-renowned Investor net worth spiked 7.6 billion Wednesday, bringing it up to 147.4 billion with the Berkshire um, Hathaway rising more than 5%. So as you can see, like the entrepreneurship and business is thriving very, very well. The, the markets are, are praising, they're praising this news that, that's come that, you know, we're not going to be seeing these massive changes coming from co coming from, you know, the government like that. That should not even be on the table. And and it's weird. Like the I'm not I don't dive too heavily into the politics because I don't care. It's not making me money. So there's really no point in being in it personally. But there are certain things where there's there, there are certain overlaps where <laughs> capital gains, taxes get brought up and things like that. There are certain overlaps. And listen, I feel like. A lot of the investors and a lot of the people whose money, who's 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 paying for these people to run, I feel like a lot of them are impacted by stupid policy. So why, like, I don't even know why it would be presented in the first place, but there was no way that was going to go through. Um, Brian Armstrong, the CEO of crypto platform Coinbase, has an estimated $11 billion net worth after a $2.6 billion increase Wednesday, the result of a whopping 31% surge for Coinbase as it closed at $254. Um, the platform's co-founder, Fred Arison, became $600 million richer as markets closed. Um, Vlad Teneve and Bahat, Bahat, Bahat something? I don't, I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> the Robinhood co-founders net worth climbed together with Bahat's up $307 million to $1.9 Huh? With Bahat up $307 million to $1.9 billion and Tevs up nearly $300 million to $1.9 billion as well. Robinhood share surged almost 20% Wednesday. Michael Saylor, the big Bitcoin beast himself. Saylor, the, the co-founder of, um, well, the founder of Bitcoin strategy firm MicroStrategy became nearly $600 million richer as his estimated net worth climbed to $6.6 billion while the company's stock swelled 13% to $257, um, one of the highest points of the year. So yeah, like everybody, everybody's he eating right now. Everybody's going up. Um, he's, oh, hold on, they, they're talking about some, some more. So they're talking about Meta co-founder Mark Zuckerberg did not join in the rush as he experienced a small drop in net worth to 197.9 billion and kept his place as the fourth wealthiest person in the world behind Ellison. Meta shares ended the trading day at 572, down down 38 cents. So <clears throat> they experienced a drop. I mean, that's interesting. That's crazy. <clears throat> why y'all think why y'all think he he had a drop? Um Bitcoin reached an all-time high <clears throat> Wednesday, skyrocketing past the $76,000 mark in reaction to Trump's electoral victory. And yeah, I mean, so essentially everything has gone up. Everything is going crazy right now. Um Business people are are loving it. B business people are loving it. Obviously, this is great for business owners. So many people are planning to get rich this term with um, Trump in office. And there's going to be a lot of opportunity for business owners. And I think this is the perfect time with AI, AI technology advancing, cryptocurrency where it's at, the NFT space where that there is some opportunity there still. 
Um, there's so much new technology and so much being done right now that there is a lot of money to be made um, if you are in the right spot. So yeah, we'll be covering a lot of that on this channel. A lot of different ways I'm making money, a lot of ways you can make money, anybody can jump into. It's so much opportunity and we'll be going over it all. But that being said, y'all be sure to drop that thumbs up, subscribe and turn on notifications and I will catch you all on the next one. Peace out, fam.